Welcome back to the videos on Form 5 Biology. In this video, we'll learn the technique of answering essay questions, as most students find it difficult to score in this section. We'll use a question from this topic, Types of Immunity, from Chapter 1 from 5, to discuss some techniques of answering essay questions. So let's begin. Here's the question. Based on the graphs below, compare and contrast the two types of immunity shown. So looking at this question, you will find that it is a question on comparison. Compare and contrast. So when we say compare and contrast, we mean comparison of the similarities and also the differences. So we have to write both the similarities and the differences down. And looking at the allocation of marks, since it's 10 marks, you need to have 10 points, including differences and similarities. So this type of question on comparison is quite common in the SPM and other exams. And we need to know how to answer these kind of questions so that we can score for this section. So let's have a look at these two graphs here. You'll see that graph X has a curve that goes up, comes down, and then goes up again to a very high level. And the shape of this graph tells us it's about one type of immunity, which is artificial active immunity or artificially acquired active immunity. Whereas for graph Y, in which the shape is different, it goes straight up and then comes down very quickly. And again, after another injection, goes straight up. The concentration of antibodies goes straight up and then comes down again. So this type of graph with this shape like shark's fin like that, and this is like the surface of the water, this shape of graph is for artificially acquired passive immunity. So we need to identify these two graphs first before we can discuss similarities and differences. And also take note, the titles here, concentration of antibodies against time. And this line here represents the level of immunity that a person has to reach in order to become immune to a particular disease. Right. So first you identify what is graph X and what is graph Y. And just state it down just to make sure that you don't get confused which is which. So in graph X, the person who has who was injected with the vaccine uh, acquires artificially acquired active immunity. And for graph Y, the person who was injected with the antiserum acquires artificially acquired passive immunity. So we write this down first so that we don't get confused as we compare the two types of graphs. Let's start by discussing the similarities. For both graphs X and Y, both involve injection of a substance, for example, vaccine for graph X, right? And for graph Y is an antiserum to increase the level of antibodies and defend the body against infections. So here we can see that after injection of the substances, there's increase in the level of antibodies. Here there's injection and also a booster dose here and both cause the increase in the level of antibodies. So something was injected leading to the increase in level of antibodies for both graphs. Both involve the use of antibodies to destroy antigens. So in both cases, the aim of giving the injection is to increase the level of antibodies to destroy antigens. That's the aim. Or pathogens. Okay, either in the future or 
This one is in the future, but this one is for the present moment when the person is sick. Right? For vaccine, we inject the vaccine is to help the person in the future to have a high level of antibodies to fight against any infection. Right? The third one. In both cases, the level of antibodies must exceed the level of immunity for the person to recover. So here now we talk about the level of immunity. Both have a level of immunity that must be reached in order for the person to be immune. So for the first case, there's no recovery from sickness. It's just to make the person immune. But for the second case, the injection is, to, is given to a sick person to gain temporary immunity and also to help him recover from the disease by destroying all the pathogens that may have entered his body at that point. Okay, right, continue. So in both cases, booster dose is given to increase the level of antibodies so that it exceeds the level of immunity. So the booster dose is found here. You can see a, sad, a drop and then a sudden increase in the level of antibodies. So this is the part where there was a booster dose or a second injection given. And here too. Okay, booster doses were given to help the level of antibodies exceed beyond the level of immunity. Okay, booster dose given to help the body so that the level of antibodies increases beyond the level of immunity. Okay, so each sentence here is one mark. So there are four points and you get four marks in total for the similarities. So now you will need six differences, at least six differences to make it um, a total of 10 marks. Now let us look at the differences. Before we do so, if you find that these two graphs are not familiar and you do not understand the shape of the graph, how, you, how we get this graph if injection of vaccine is given or injection of antiserum, then you need to go through the video that I prepared on types of immunity. After that, you can do the question and you can understand better. Okay, so right, let's continue with the differences. So for graph X, it involves artificially acquired active immunity. Graph Y involves artificially acquired passive immunity. This first point has already been mentioned at the beginning of the essay answer. So if you write it here again, you will not get extra marks for it. But it's good to write it down in the table so that you can clearly see that graph X is for this type of active immunity and Y is for passive immunity. So we will not be confused between the two graphs. Right, next point, immunity is obtained through injection of vaccine for graph X. And vaccine means dead or weakened pathogens. For graph Y, immunity is obtained through injection of antiserum, that is, antibodies in a serum. So we need to write this, the name, uh, antiserum, meaning antibody, the anti stands for antibody, in a serum. Now what is a serum? Can you write serum here alone, injection of serum? It's not so good because serum actually means blood plasma without the substance that can clot, that can cause the clot, fibrinogen. So serum means blood plasma without fibrinogen, that's all. It doesn't mean that there are antibodies in it, unless you state anti-serum. So for this part, write down the word anti-serum and also explain antibodies in a serum. That's the best answer. Okay. Uh, whereas vaccine, they are dead or weakened pathogens. When injected, they will stimulate the lymphocytes to produce antibodies. Okay, but for graph Y, antibodies are themselves injected into the body of the sick patient in order to destroy the pathogens that may have entered. Now, third point, the person acquires immunity gradually, only after booster dose. Okay, so the first dose was given here and the second dose here, right? The booster dose. So you can see that the level of antibody rises slowly, maybe through weeks or months. And finally, it 
goes over the level of immunity. So this is when the person becomes immune to the disease and it's gradual because it takes some weeks or months here, huh? slowly going up. But for why the person acquires immunity immediately after the injection? So you see that the level of antibody shoots up beyond the level of immunity straight away, person becomes immune here, right? On the same day, for example. After the injection, when the the person acquires immunity immediately after the injection, when the concentration of antibodies exceeds the level of immunity. Okay, immediately. So immediate immunity for Y and gradual immunity for X. Let's continue with the fourth difference. For graph X, the immunity lasts a longer time. For graph Y, the immunity is short term. So you can see here in the tail end here, the graph for graph X will slope down very gently and it will not go down below the level of immunity for some time, right? If it goes down below the level of immunity, it means that the person has is no longer immune, okay? but it takes some time. Whereas for graph Y, the level of antibodies just dips down or goes down very fast in a steep this deep curve. Okay. Now the reason why for X the immunity lasts a longer time is because it is the body's own lymphocytes that were stimulated to produce antibodies when they were exposed to the vaccine which contains the dead pathogens. Okay, dead or weakened pathogens. So it's the body's own lymphocyte that produces the antibodies. So they they can produce, keep on producing for some time. Now for graph Y, the immunity is short term because the antibody was injected into the body directly and it did not stimulate the lymphocytes to produce antibodies. So the antibody is foreign, is a foreign substance and is broken down very quickly by the body. Okay, the injected antibody is a foreign substance. So that's why the level of antibodies drops very fast because the foreign antibodies have been broken down by the person's own body. Okay, right. Fifthly, the injection of vaccine is given to a healthy person before infection of any disease, but for graph Y, it's given to a sick person who is already infected with disease, with that specific disease. So the reason why vaccine is given to a healthy person and not a sick person is because sick people are already under attack by another pathogen, for example, and their defense system, system may not be able to produce antibodies for another pathogen because they are already weak. But for graph Y, injection of antiserum is given to a sick patient or person for example, a person who has been bitten by a dog with rabies. He goes and sees the doctor. The doctor will definitely give him a, an injection of antiserum for rabies. So that in case he's infected with the pathogen of rabies, the injection of antibodies or antiserum will be able to destroy the rabies pathogen or virus. So that's why he's injected with antiserum and it's also for sick people only. Now the second injection for number six called the booster dose. What is the function of the second injection? So in this graph the second injection is at this point here when it suddenly dips down but it goes up suddenly again right and for this point the second injection is at this week here. Okay so the second injection serves different purpose for X and Y. For X, the second injection is given to increase the concentration of antibodies to exceed the level of immunity. Okay, yeah, exceed the level of immunity so that the person acquires immunity. And it's not to destroy any remaining pathogens because the person didn't fall sick from any disease. He's a healthy person, right? So it's just to let him get immunity. Whereas for Y, the second injection is to help him again acquire immunity, but it is to destroy all the remaining 
pathogens which have entered this body. Okay. Difference number six is a bit long on the previous slide. So you can leave that out since here you have two more differences that are easier to remember, right? So let's look at difference number seven. Memory cells are produced which produce a more rapid immune response during future infections. So when vaccine is injected into a person, these are dead and weakened or weakened pathogens. They will stimulate the lymphocytes to produce antibodies. After the vaccine has been given, the lymphocytes are produced which are memory cells that live longer and they already can produce these antibodies and they'll last a long time. So they can produce a more rapid immune response during any more infections in the future like the real infections when the real pathogens enter the body, the living ones. But for graph Y, memory cells are not produced because injection of antibodies doesn't include injection of the weakened or dead pathogens. That means lymphocytes are not stimulated to produce antibodies at all. It's the antibodies that are directly injected into the body. So memory cells are not produced from there, from the injection of antibodies, unless it contains pathogens, which it doesn't. So examples of vaccines are those for rubella, hepatitis B and measles. And for graph Y, examples of antiserum are those for titanus, rabies and snake bites. So giving examples in the comparison can get you or help you to obtain one mark also. So in total, we can have about seven differences if you don't want to give difference number six. So there are seven differences and four similarities. Total, you have 11 points. So always try to give more than the required amount of points. 11 points will be 11 marks, but you exceed the 10 mark requirement. So you get your 10 marks. So write a bit more in case one of your points is not correct. Okay, you still have 10 points. Now a tip from A plus students. Write down this essay answer as a practice in your exercise book to remember the points. This will also help you to prepare yourself to write essays during exams. So I've talked to a lot of A plus students, sort of interviewed them to find out how they did so well in biology. And I've learned a lot from them. And this is one tip that was given by some of the A plus students. They write down the essay answers, model answers as practice in an exercise book in order to remember the points. When you write it out, you remember the points better, right? And this will help you to prepare yourself also, like just like you are, you are in the exam hall writing essays, so that you will not feel so, uh, you will not feel it's so unfamiliar to write essays during exams. It will familiarize you if you write it during your revision. It will familiarize you to prepare you to write essays during the exams. Practice for the real day. That's all for the discussion today. I hope that you have learned something from all this and do write down the answers as a practice. Thank you. If you find this video interesting and helpful in your learning of biology, do share, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next video.